Hallelujah. I'm going to get into word study and get right into it. And join me if you can and uh, share this video. And anything else, any of the teachings I do, you're welcome to share with others. And we're doing a kind of a ser series of different things I've, from t teaching a couple of weeks ago. And I'm going to go through some terms that we ran across when we did that Bible study. So, And this is one I was thinking about. I don't think it actually went with a, but it's something that I thought about. And I thought, oh, how important it is. So we'll get right into it and join us if you can. If you miss any of it, you can go back and listen to it again. And make sure you bring pencil and paper and take notes and write down the scripture so you can study the word for yourself. Don't just take my word for things. Study to show thyself approved, as scripture says. Study for yourself. And this is what this is. is to share what I've studied and we can talk, discuss it. And if you have any ideas or anything that you would like to add, just make a comment below. Or message me and I'll be glad to answer any questions that may come up. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'll get into prayer and we'll get right into the study because I don't know how long this will be. You know, it's, there's so much information on just what little bit you can find because the Word of God is great and powerful and has a lot of information. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for this time. And Lord, that you uh, help us to understand what your Word is telling us and what uh, is said in your Word that we might do and what is required of us, that we might do what we need to do. We thank you for your word and help us to apply your word to our lives, that we might grow and gain more of it. Hallelujah, Jesus. God bless you. We're going to get started on word study. And uh, I thought about this phrase, and it's in the Bible. And the name of it is work out your salvation. That's a phrase. All right. First of all, I'm going to. So many teach grace, and you don't have to do anything and still go to heaven. Hyper grace. But that's not what the Word of God says. That we. Because if you really think about it, even in the natural bodies, or even in the spiritual, you sit around and do nothing, you will die. And even the scripture says we're walk, walk, walking by faith, but f faith without works is dead. So it's a, if you think about the term, it's found in the scripture, uh, there is a scripture in the Bible which we're going to read in just a second and study it. The phrase, work out your salvation. But what does it mean? How do you do it? What does, what is Paul, the writer, is really saying? Think about it. The first word of that phrase, work. Work is an action word. It's actually doing something to produce something. You're working on something. <clears throat> and you have to do something. All right. The main scripture and the only place in the Bible that phrase is actually found is in Philippians. And you might want to write down scriptures and take notes. Uh, Philippians 2 12 through 16. Alright, the first few verses before this, verse 12, is talking about Christ and what he done for us. And how powerful he was and what he did to produce the thing of what we call salvation. Alright, starting with the 12 through the 16th verse. So, in Philippians 2, 12 through 16. 
So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And we'll get back to that and break that down. Um, for it is God who is at work in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling and disputing, that you may prove yourselves to be blameless innocent children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you appear as lights in the world holding fast to the word of life holding fast to this word of life because it is life so that in the day of Christ I may have cause to glory because I did not run in vain nor toil in vain. He said, because you held on, because you held fast to the word of God and what God has to say, you're going to be stronger by, through it. All right, let's break that down. First of all, we need to understand, for those that don't know, need to understand what salvation is. The term salvation means to be delivered from sin and have safety and preserved from danger. Preserved from the danger of hell. Preserved from the enemy and what he has plans for us. First of all, you need to re those that haven't need to receive salvation. Salvation of Christ, what he did on the cross, receive him and repent, and that takes action. Going to him go and receiving him, that's an action word, and then repent. Because Christ is our foundation of this Christian walk, this salvation, the, everything about this life. I'm going to read a couple other scriptures. First one is found in Hebrews, and then we'll get back to that scripture in a minute. Hebrews 5, 9 says, And having been made perfect, that's talking about Christ, he became, be, he became to those who obey him the source of eternal salvation. See, he's the foundation. He's the source of our safety, of our being delivered, of our repentance and forgiveness. He's the source of it, all that. Because he, God saw him worthy to take on the cross because he had no sin. All right, then the, the other scripture I'm going to read before we get break the other one down is... 2 Corinthians 7, 15. And his affection bounds to, abounds all the more toward you. That's Christ. Toward you as he remembers the obedience of you all. How you received him with, there the term is again, fear and trembling. I'm going to talk about what that is. So being obedient. Being in obedience and having fear and trembling of God. Fear and trembling of what he did. Alright, first of all, obedience is actually being submissive to his will. Being submissive to his way and complying to the word. And hearken. The Bible dictionary gave that term, hearken. Hearken means to hear and apply it. Not just hearing it, but doing it. See, there's that action word. Being obedient is action. Working to, for salvation. <clears throat> Alright, the term work. 
means communion. You do this by the things that we need to do by working to show that we're working, we're communing with Him. That's prayer, sometimes fasting, and reading on the old band His Word. That's action. That's doing something. That's faith with works. Doing something. And in order to work this salvation, you need the Holy Spirit and listen to it. And use that Holy Spirit to guide you and lead you. With that Holy Spirit, when we get saved, see, we get, we're we given the Holy Spirit when we get saved. But, or, uh, before I get into the other one, is we need to resist sin and follow the Holy Spirit. Resist. Turn away from evil. That's what repentance is, is turn away from your old life. And repenting and getting a, turning completely and doing a different work doing a different thing and just like when we were growing up as young children we had to learn to walk that's action praise the Lord that's action we're talking about working out your salvation found in Philippians 2 12 through 16 so we're resisting sin resisting the temptation T temptation that's given to us using the word because Jesus was even tempted by the devil after he fasted 40 days and 40 nights he had to take action and speak the word of God to keep from falling away from his father the Jehovah so we need to resist but praise the Lord the enemy resists sin and follow the Holy Spirit. We're using the Holy Spirit to do the work. It is important to sanctify ourselves. Important to sanctify. Cleanse our habits. Do away with the things that are uh, that are not pleasing to the Lord. And I'm going to do a study before too long. I got it on the list of sanctification. To understand what that is, because the scripture says we need to sanctify ourselves. Getting rid of our old life, getting rid of our sinful nature, getting rid of our carnal nature, and putting on the spiritual nature. We need to draw near to God. That's These are things that, when it entails working out your salvation, things you ha do that... There's action. There's work. Work is really kind of a poor, uh, but in a way it is. You actually have to do something. We need to draw near to God. So we're moving. We're doing something. Walking by faith. Alright? This is what I want to say, those that have known salvation the scripture even Jesus told the disciples and his followers to don't go out and do ministry don't go out and witness don't go out and do what I did he he had he had signs wonders and miracles that followed him and did uh, brought many many souls to the kingdom but he says don't go out and do that thing and tell you receive the power that I have, which is the Holy Ghost, found in book of Acts, the second chapter. Receive that Holy Ghost and understand what that Holy Ghost does. It leads and guides you. It gives you strength. It gives you power over the enemy. And it gives you the authority when you speak the word of God in spiritual warfare. It does something. You say something that God tells you to say, the power and the authority is with it. Receive his power. See, we receive his spirit when he gets saved, but receive the power of the Holy Ghost. And, of course, the evidence of speaking in other tongues, in another language. 
that we do not know. But when you receive that, also use it to act in any way doing to please God. Doing whatever we can to please and honor the Father. Being obedient and submissive to His will. To what the scripture says. Doing all that you can to obey God. But remember, this work of salvation cannot be done of yourself. It takes God and His Word. It takes the Holy Ghost's help. It takes the spiritual, because it's a spiritual walk. Salvation is a spiritual thing, and it takes taking faith in God to work it out, to walk it out. To do what needs to be done. You can't do it on your own power. So many have tried to be, to put down cigarettes or put down this habit and everything. But they could not do it without the Holy Ghost help. But when it's done through God and the Holy Ghost, it can be done. See, our old life and our old sinful nature cannot completely be destroyed and done away with without God helping us, without the Holy Spirit leading and guiding us and helping us and bringing to our remembrance something we need to get rid of or forget, get forgiveness of or whatever it might be. All right. The scripture there in uh, Corinthians and, what is it? 2 Corinthians 7, 15 and Philippians 2, 12 says, When you're working out your salvation, you do it with fear and trembling. All right, what does that phrase mean, fear and trembling? It is holy fear that trembles at the very word of God. With a spoken word from God, you're just humbled and tremble at his grace greatness and his awesome powerful things and who he is it causes you to turn from evil when you have this hum humble and submit to God be obedient is submitting to God you have you have this respectful fear of him that you're gonna bow before him and turn from your old way if you're not turning from your old life, your old things, your your carnal nature, then you need to get to the altar and work on it and get it done and get rid of it. It causes the fear and trembling ha causes you to have fear all of the power all of God's mighty working power. His holiness and righteousness in retribution or disciplining when we do wrong. Uh, to turn for, to have, because you have a fear of God, you have righteous, know He's righteous and He will discipline if necessary. He will do what you need, what needs to be done to correct us. We do with our own children. And it causes you to dread facing the consequences. I remember growing up when my mom and dad would discipline or punish us for something. We literally had a, a fear of our of the belt. <laughs> or with my grandma it was a switch or or we had a, a respectful fear to know that if we didn't do right, I had such a fear, I had a guilty conscience of a lot of things, and I did not do a lot of things that my brothers and sisters may have done. I was sure did a few things. I'm, I admit to some things. But it's having that kind of a fear and understanding that if you do wrong, you pay the, you pay the piper, as they say. That if you do, don't do what he says to do, and that you sin, do sinful things, and go back knowing that God will 
stopping your tracks. You lose out on his blessings. You lose out on things. You dread facing the consequences of not get not being able to go into his presence. Because the scripture says in order to go into his real presence, to be in his presence, his holy, awesome presence with uh, the uh, the glory clouds, the angels, the experience of those things, it takes repentance. It takes submitting and humbling yourself before God. And when you go into his presence, you because you're... Uh, don't have a sinful nature. Uh, was it even David said in Psalms that who can come before the Lord unless he has a pure heart and clean hands? Because we'll dread the consequences of where we'll end up if we keep on doing wrong. It's also the wholesome and redeeming fear that leads us to God's nearness and His blessings. It causes us to desire and want to be close to the one that we love. Because we have that awesome, whole, redeeming fear that knowing He did it for us, we want to spend time with Him. We want to get close. And then, in the end, benefits of whatever blessings he give us because we're being obedient. We're coming and submitting at his feet. Just like uh, the king, which God is the king, Jesus is the, and God is the king of the spiritual world, the top person, just in the natural, we have to go and bow and be humble before a natural king or a natural uh leader the same way we need to spiritually come before God because we have fear knowing who he is what he's done you read a lot of stuff about I shouldn't say stuff all the things that he's done the whole Bible is written on his greatness on what he done the miracles he he performed through many different men and women of God and prophecies and different things and things are still to this day how many years almost six thousand years later that the miracles and the awesome of, of God is still coming to pass it's still happening so that reverential fear and and we tremble is not a you're scared and shaky you know a fear but you tremble just in your in your spiritual man of humil you are in humility, you are submissive, you come before him. It causes you to obey, submit, and hearken to God, which is what obedience is. Having that with fear and trembling, we will want to desire to be obedient to his word. Be obedient to what God has to say. And one of the, re a few results of it, like I said, we, communion with him, we will, this is where another work comes in. We are to produce fruits. I can only mention a few things. There's many other things throughout the word says that we must do. We produce the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5. And one scripture I'm going to read tonight is found in... I had it. J Peter. 2 Peter. These are actual... You're working, you're just like you're building a building or producing something. In order to produce something, you have to take action. And faith is an action word. The second chapter of 1 Peter. These are different things that we need to do. <clears throat> All right. Uh... Like new, we'll start at the second verse. 
like newborn babes longing for the pure milk of the word that by you may grow in respect of salvation because we are eager to learn and know what he has to say in his word. The milk is the first elements and instructions and spiritual nourishment that we need to grow and build upon it. See, we can word upon word, line upon line, that's even in the scripture itself, but in the spiritual sense for us, when we're young in the Lord, we just get saved, it takes time to build, takes time to learn, even to be disciples. That's why the uh, disciples were with Jesus three years and they still didn't quite get it all until the Holy Ghost got a hold of them. Then they saw the light. It's like they, they received of God. Hallelujah. We're on working out your salvation, the phrase. And it's found in Philippians 2, 12 through 16. You may have to go. I'm almost done with the scriptures, but you may have to go back and listen to the video again. All right. Verse 3. If you have tasted the kindness of the Lord, if you have received his goodness of salvation, his gift of salvation, his gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift that he gives us, it's a blessing in itself. If you have tasted and received that kindness of the Lord, and coming to him as to living a living stone, he what is did I say? He is the foundation. He is we're building on his foundation what Christ had done on the cross, what he had started for our li spiritual lives. Coming to him as a living stone rejected of men, but choice and precious in the sight of God. See, we're not always accepted by man. We're not always accepted by this world. That's not important. We need to be submissive and be have an awesome fear of God that we will know that we are His child. And that our choice and pre is precious in the sight of God. Our choice of wanting God above all else. Wanting God and salvation above all things. Verse 5. You also as a living stones are being built up as spiritual house. See this? We have an, uh, a physical house, a physical body. But we need we have a spiritual man inside that needs to be built up and strengthened and given all that we can get. Build up a spiritual house for a holy priesthood. We what does the scripture says, without holiness no one will see the Lord. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. So that's Action, work. You're actually doing things to please Him. You're, was it, uh, sacrifice? We give a sacrifice of praise. We give a saf sacrifice of sometimes of our time. Sacrifice of of uh, of just everything to receive of God. Sacrifice whatever is acceptable to God. What He expects of us. For this is contained in Scripture. Oh, excuse me. I got the... Huh. I had the wrong book. It's Second Peter. I'm sorry. But that's true that we have to build... Take the milk of the Word and build upon it. We're building stones. Second Peter, the first chapter. says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. I realize that other verses, something wasn't leading into what I was going to be reading. I knew these scriptures quite well. 
says third verse seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life everything that we need to build upon what I just read in the other scripture what we need to build what we need to strengthen what we need to grow by like building blocks we need to granted to us everything everything's given pertaining to life everything in the word is given to us for a blessing for us to grow by and to gain from and to understand God to understand Jesus to understand the Holy Ghost to understand Paul gave a lot of explanations about life and spiritual life especially he said this is a even Paul likened it as a race as action you're running you're doing you're trying to work and you're walking toward it, your goal all right pertaining to life and godliness and godliness means holiness what did I just say without holiness no man shall see the Lord through the true knowledge of him who called us by his glory true knowledge through the true knowledge every all the knowledge of God and all that we need to know is in the Word of God uh, of him who called us by his own glory and excellence excellence is virtue good qualities that we have integrity that we can be show forth that we are uh, I've heard people say we they can count this is just an example. I don't want to raise myself up, but can count on you because I've been told that by my pa pastor. He said, I can count on you. I know you're going to do what's right. That's what it is. We built, we become excellent soldiers of the cross. We become excellent Christians and receiving what he had done for us. Verse 4, 4. By these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises or building blocks or things that we need and information we have to have. He gave us his promises. He said you have abundant life. You would have peace. You would have joy. You would have all these other things. In order by them you might become partakers of the divine nature. He wants you to have a divine nature to change our like Paul said in Romans and different other places, he said to change our carnal nature into a spiritual nature. Get rid of our flesh. And having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust, this old world would trick us and bring us down and drag us down. Verse 5, For now for this very reason also applying this is our building blocks applying all diligence diligence is uh, is actually uh, you're gonna work hard you're gonna not give up you're gonna try your best you're gonna do all that's required of you in your faith supply moral excellence what did I say? Virtue, good qualities, having good qualities, having integrity and ethics about everything you do. And in your moral excellence, knowledge. You're building up on that building block. If you have excellence, you're going to build up on the Word of God, the knowledge of God and who He is and what He is and share it with the world. And in your knowledge, self-control. As getting away from a carnal flesh, having control over our bad habits, having control sometimes over our mouth, <laughs> especially for those I know my husband working out in the world and around guys that cussed a lot. He, <laughs> there was times when he got upset, he would something come out and he would say, "Lord, forgive me," or I, he, he'd even ask for my forgiveness. Slip, the words are slipped. I know the same thing when I worked out in the world. But self, having self-control over your habits, having self-control over your mouth, ha, what, what is it? The scripture Paul says your tongue is the 
hardest thing to control? Having self-control over your thought life. Having self-control over your what you do. What you choose to do. Do you choose to do that would... What is it? Uh, there used to be a bracelet when I was growing up that said WD, uh, see, WWJD. What would Jesus do? Do you have that kind of control that you're going to do whatever pleases God? In all things, even in this world, even in our jobs? Self-control and in your self-control, perseverance, endurance, and strength. You're not going to give up. You're going to go all the way. You're not going to give up your salvation and sell yourself out like uh, Jacob did for a mere porridge, bowl of porridge. You're going to keep going on. You're not going to give up on this wonderful walk in God. Build upon having perseverance. And in your perseverance, godliness was his holiness. And in your holiness, brotherly kindness. Having brotherly kindness. Love towards one another. Not in kindness, but then there is a word love. There's a difference. Kindness is just being kind to somebody and helping somebody. But love is you're being kind to them because you love. Having the love of God just emanating, there it is, from you to that person of, to show them that he's a wonderful God. He's worth serving. He's worth having salvation. He's worth loving. So having brotherly kindness to even those, I tried to show that to one of my, uh, my elders one time, and she even those that are unwanted, that are dirty, that are out in the street. We had uh, a lady had come in. She went, was getting away from an abusive relationship, and she had been on the street for three days. She even apologized. She said, I'm stinking. I never had, didn't get to get a shower. I got dirty clothes on. I tried to get the my elder. I ministered to her, but... And I showed her love, and I put my arms around her. Because love will do away with hate and all the hurts. I know that. But to get my elder to show brotherly kindness with love. She may have had some kindness. I'll get some. Uh, it was a, she didn't want to have anything to do with it. She didn't want to come near that lady. When I told her, I said, go, go take care of her personal needs of because I keep, I keep uh, some hygiene products and uh, some clothes on hand. And uh, I try to have coats in case somebody comes in that's cold during the winter. And have whatever snacks that I, they can have to eat that they may need. But show brotherly kindness and in love. And for all these qualities, all these building blocks are yours and increasing they render you neither useless that you're not lazy you're working your salvation that you're doing all that you can in God neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge in the true knowledge having fruit of the spirits and the true fruit of the spirits is found in the word of God unfruitful and true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So building blocks and working your salvation is building and growing stronger and not just say you've been to the altar and sit back and say God knows, that's it. So many even today that may have been saved for a while that they sit back thinking they're okay. But it takes reading their word. It takes praying. It takes seeking God. It takes communion with fellowship with others. And especially communion with God. And obeying what he has to say. Sometimes they obey their own feelings. But we're building on a foundation. And producing fruits. And trying to please God. And having that reverence, fear 
fear of God. The church has lost a lot of the fear of God. And uh, and just a second, I'm going to write that down. And if I haven't already done that study, I'm going to do one time on the fear of God. But to have that fear of God, because he expects us to fear him, that he could hurt us, but we fear him because we love him, and he will do us what's right for us, too. Having it respect. And, of course, in Revelations, he that I think it is, he that endureth to the end shall be saved. It's a race. It's action. You're working towards that salvation. You're working towards your heavenly home. You're moving. You're doing something. You're walking by faith. And faith without works is dead. So we're working things out. Let me see if I can find that scripture real quick. Faith without works is dead. I think it's in... Uh, let me see. Hebrews. But anyway, it's faith without works. I meant to write that down. Without works. We've got to have work. We've got to work our salvation. We've got to build upon the things of God. I'm about to close out here. I think that's Sister Terry, if that's you. You can go back and listen to the whole, the whole study. But working out our salvation. It's not just that we get saved and we sit back and do nothing. We have to do something. We have to act on it. We have to seek more of Him. We're bit. What is it in Philippians? I mean, Peter, Second Peter is talking about building upon that knowledge, taking that knowledge and building. You're actually seeking. You're actually doing some actions to get strong, to get all that you can in God, and walking and going closer and closer to God. That fear of God and with fear and trembling that will, will help cause us to turn for evil and go towards God. Having a desire to please God. Having a desire to obey. So, it's working out your salvation found in Philippians 2, 12 through 16. Only scripture in the Bible that has that phrase. But we need to do it. For the kingdom. For us to reach heaven. Our heavenly home. Lord we thank you for this word. We thank you for what, what you're showing us. And teaching us in your word. That we might be doers. And apply. And hearken. And do what you say. And obey you. That we might walk with integrity. We might walk with perseverance. That we might walk with diligence. That we might walk in righteousness. And holiness. Because we know we won't see you if we don't. Lord, help us to do what's right. And follow your word. And be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. So share this video with others. And until next time, I'm not, I'll see what God gives me for Saturday night message. But <coughs> otherwise it will be for... Live Bible study is always Tuesday evenings at 7 Central. So, God bless you, and I hope you learned something, and it's just not something you get saved once, always saved, always saved. You have to, in order to stay saved, you've got to do something. You've got to follow His Word. You've got to be obedient to His Word and do what it says and have fear of God. So, God bless you.